Hello ladies and gentlemen, Willie here. Pay to win is one of the scariest things you can hear as an MMORPG fan. It takes away from the integrity of the game, it undermines the grind that goes into your character's progression, and MMOs should be those virtual worlds where people can start an equal footing, but set themselves apart through their endeavours within the virtual world, not just be a dick measuring contest for who can fork out the most cash and zoom to the end and the best weapons or armour. And it is just plain disappointing to hear that another title you may have been looking forward to, have been interested or even back to trying is written off because the developers see it fit to allow people to gain some kind of advantage through a real life means. What even is pay to win though? Well, I would say it's any out of game transaction through real life money, which can lead to any in game advantage, which for me at least gives it a pretty damn wide scope. You see, there's those cases where a developer says they're not going to have any pay to win in their game, but that's what they think is pay to win because at the top end of it we have some pretty on the nose pay to win games. These tend to be mobile titles which don't really have any planned longevity to them where they offer directly better items, clear advantages in PvP combat or powerful PvE consumables which will set you apart from others. And then we have the optional stuff, but if you play a game for long enough, you start to realize that actually you're kind of going to need these because the developers built in enough inconvenience to the game where you are heavily incentivized to spend some real money. These are your extra storage space, your extra action bar slots and your mounts or mount upgrades perhaps. And then we have the stuff below that, your experience or profession boosts. In-game currency for real life money often through a token or a bond or something of the like. Even cosmetics to a degree, when you see somebody riding about on a unique giant sparkle dragon whilst you're on your 50 second variety of horse. All of them are leading to a faster route through progression be it direct or indirect. And sometimes another thing you hear is, but the game's free, you can work towards it eventually within the game, it's just an option to buy it instead only to realize Timmy, who has swiped $40 for that mount, is going to take you 40 in-game hours to earn instead, at which point you look at the day job and start calculating how little time that really is in real terms compared to an insane grind required within the virtual world, and you start feeling dumb for wasting so much time on something you know is one swipe away, and then you question why you're even playing the damn game if it's just making you feel like A, spending your real money to keep up, or B, just wasting your time. This is the problem with pay to win, it breaks the gameplay loop and takes people out of the online world and looking at themselves in the real one. So as you can probably imagine from that nice light intro, I'm not particularly a fan of pay to win. So can it ever be good? On launch of a game? No, never. In fact, it seems completely backwards to even launch a game with pay to win options. Amazon initially were planning on launching New World with pay for convenience factors, and there was a massive amount of very reasonable community pushback for this happening, as selling people ways to progress faster on day one just doesn't make a lot of sense. Convenience existing from day one assumes that there is value in the items being sold in the in-game shop and that players would similarly place value in them as well, which assumes that Amazon would have made a game that they saw contained enough inconvenience to be able to offer said services. So why as a player would you ever accept a game where the company believes that they have made something inconvenient to the point where people would place value and buy things from a shop on day one, instead of the company just making, I don't know, a game which is well adjusted and that fits for what would otherwise have been an acceptable position to launch in. Amazon have now backed down from this and will only be selling cosmetics at launch in the shop, but I wouldn't be surprised if these services made a comeback in due course. Pay to win or even convenience from launch always hit like a bit of a mobile game to me where there's no real long term plan to build a community, to create a world, just to get people hooked enough to where they think, ah whatever it's like 10 or 20 bucks for this service and it's going to save me so much time in the long run when I'm playing the game, to the point where as a player you feel kind of dumb for not buying microtransactions or pay to win when a game offers them because everybody else is doing it and you feel like you're losing ground and just won't be able to keep up. So at launch, no bueno, but post launch, this is where it's pretty common actually to have some form of in-game shop, not strictly always with pay to win, but once the cosmetic foot gets in the door, you know how things go over time. It's part of all online major games now, almost to the point of less seemingly harmful forms of it becoming widely accepted. New World will launch with cosmetics, Ashes of Creation will launch with cosmetics, 
And let me tell you, even though Riot hasn't said a single thing about their MMO, if there is one thing Riot does, it's cosmetics. I don't see a world where their MMO does not launch with them being in some form of shop. These are the more benign practices though that have gradually been fed into becoming more mainstream as the freemium model starts to take over, led by titles such as Fortnite and League of Legends, though now crossing into the MMO stream as well. At least we don't have any straight up pay to win though, right? But some games out there do. They have it real bad. Gambling for loot boxes, buying experience directly or crafting materials to even armor and weapons. I want to go over an example with RuneScape 3 because I'm very familiar with the game. In 2016, a YouTuber called A Friend made an account on RS3 called Not Pay to Win and yep, you guessed it, all he did was throw money at an in-game shop to try and get maximum stats in the shortest time possible that a player had ever done it, buying microtransactions when there were deals on that made it more beneficial and clicking a whole lot of buying and using keys. He maxed out, of course, and it cost him a little over $13,000. This also came with every possible rare drop from the in-game shop and a lot of in-game wealth. Money well spent? No, it's insanely expensive for what it is to be honest, especially by today's standards with how long it takes to train stats compared to what it used to be on RuneScape that is. And that's sometimes the thing about pay to win, quite often games that include it, it's so obscenely overpriced you would have to have a crazy amount of real life money hanging about to abuse it to the point where you are considerably, and I mean considerably ahead of other players, in terms of power in a short space of time. Yet those players who ride the pay to win wave the most, called whales, that are willing to fork out hundreds or even thousands per month on a hobby, likely justifying the expenditure by saying it's on a hobby, can carry the bankrolling of a game hard, maintain its profitability, and maybe even keep the updates coming. As we've seen recently with Blizzard's quarterly reports between Q1 in 2017 and Q2 in 2021, Blizzard has dropped from 41 million to 26 million monthly active users across their titles. However, profits have only dropped from 166 million to 141. That is a 36% drop in player base compared to a 15% in profits. Over at Jagex, they're also reporting year in, year out wins, a record revenue of over 100 million and nearly half of that being profit, which is an unbelievable margin, by the way. But there is a chart to track players online as Jagex does display that information publicly on their own site. However, much like World of Warcraft and Classic, there is one sub fee for both OSRS and RS3. And if we took their peak concurrent players of nearly 150k as shown here, Times that by $11 each and then by 12 months, it's still a little short of 20 million earned. So where is the rest of that coming from? And even in old school RuneScape, they have an item called a bond, which can be bought through real life money and is traded in game with certain limitations as for buy limits. But even 40 quid worth of bonds sold on the grand exchange is worth around 50 million gold in game, which can set you up with some decent starter end game gear. Nothing too exceptional. So no, there is no direct cash shop on old school, but they do have little ways around it there as well, where real money can give you benefits. And whilst RuneScape 3 started off very rocky due to, oof, where do I start, client issues, optimization, the combat feeling dreadfully clunky, I will say it has come a long way since then, to the point where the game has a, a lot of depth to it now. They've reworked a lot of systems, they've made the bank not absolutely awful, and they've fleshed out and frankly done a pretty good job at distinguishing itself from old school and taking the game in a totally new direction. And with how badly it floundered early on, you wonder if what exists now would have done if the game remains solely as a sub fee based title not only for runescape 3 but if that game does well jagex does well so all versions of the game should prosper as a result and whilst old school runescape does have a bond in the game i'd say the existence of heavy pay to win factors in its sister game will always keep it safe from ever having them being considered on it which makes the likes of the boost and the dark portal pass even more bitter in tbc when you know how heavily retail is monetized on top of being paid to buy and play i think pay to win at least can ensure that whatever happens your game isn't going to die numbers can drop players can leave competition can outgrow you and updates can start to become lax but as a business if the cash keeps coming in just as good it's easy to take the easy route and put that developer time into a new mount or a new armor set rather than a zone or a battleground. The old attitude and as to why the majority of MMOs used to try a sub fee was that so the developers have a reason to keep the good stuff coming. 
that the new patch has to have reasons to make the returning player get hyped for it and want to get invested in an online world again. But over time, the freemium model and buy to play have really taken over for the majority. And with that smaller barrier to entry for the player, that's where companies have started to slide the MTX in ever so gradually. If anything can be said about the positives of pay to win, it can keep near anything alive and ticking if there are enough loyal players and adequately invested players. It's like paying for life support just to make sure the game sticks around and doesn't fully fold, and then you have to wait five years for somebody to try and make a decent private server. Loyal players will keep that light on rather than see their invested time go down the drain overnight. Maybe, in some cases, the game can make a recovery and show what it always had the potential to be. In others, it's hard to see people throwing money into an endless void when you should probably just pull the plug. I think the trend of moving from subscription-based games to free-to-play or buy-to-play is going to become much more popular over the next few years. We have a lot of new MMO content which is going to be happening too, so it'll be interesting to see which kind of monetization approach different games take. I think the best thing to hope would be, even if things do end up having a cash shop on launch, is that it's purely cosmetic and pay to win keeps out of the genre as much as it possibly can. That's about it though. Let me know your thoughts on the video and everything I've gone over, how you feel about it. I imagine there's not going to be too many people in favor. You can find me on Twitter and Patreon if you want to support me or follow me there. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching and listening in. I'll see you all in the next one very soon.